you know, I, I really enjoyed it at the beginning of your book. You write in the prologue uh, um, of Borderline Citizen. For me, the complexity of the relationship of the citizen to his or her own nation is a big question of the 21st century. Where do we travel simply by the consent and citizens of the places of our birth? And how do these countries travel beyond us, writing their own travel narratives that bring us along or leave us behind, with or without consent? And you know, one thing I think you do so well um, in this book and in the many books you've written is the way that you can leave a personal story where you're present um, with the story of the people that you're writing about and that you meet, and also with the historical background um, and uh, narrative and research that uh, goes into making these um, essays kind of bigger than some of their parts. And so I was just wondering if you could talk about um, authority and um, you know narratives and how you, um, when you went into um, write this book and to report from these different places, you know we're able to, um, as a lot of writers, as all writers have to do, um, kind of convince yourself and tell yourself that you have the authority to go out and do this in different ways. You know, how we have to trick ourselves in a sense into believing that before we can get started and go. Yeah, well, this one was <clears throat> tricky in terms of authority because I, I never want to be sort of a parachute journalist going into a place and saying, I'm going to write about your place. You know, I think you don't, you can't claim total authority uh, when you're writing, especially being a travel writer in the 21st century. You, you can't do that because it's not the way it was 100 years ago or even 20 years ago. Um, people, you can't assume travelers are mean, that it means the same thing. And that also travel is a, a, a privilege. And, and when you're going from one place to another, you have to be aware that other people maybe can't go in the opposite direction. And, uh, and so borders are very real and one's place and privilege and certainly my privilege as a white male uh, is something I'm keenly aware of too as I'm I'm doing this. So it's almost in some ways the opposite of authority um, in writing. I'm looking for, um, I'm always looking for people who are authorities in their own right in the places that they live and talking to them as someone who uh, kind of wants to learn from them. Um, and I, uh, I think that that's a really important stance to take. Now, when I turn to the writing, I look for, that's where I sort of get the authority is that I'm then, it, it can take me a long time to write one of these essays. I mean, it can take me more than a year or two. I first take voluminous notes as I'm in a place. I take a lot of notes. I'm constantly taking notes. And then at the end of the day, no matter how tired I am, I try to write up the day as best as I remember it in my journal or diary. Um, and that helps immensely when I'm trying to reconstruct scenes because that's the kind of authority that you want as a writer. Um, you want to be able to place the reader into the experience that you experienced. So there are two kinds of authority. There's the authority of being an, an insider or outsider. And I want to be an informed outsider, not claim that I'm an insider um, and not sort of go in and just sort of, just sort of tell other people's stories as though I'm an expert. But on the other hand, when I am writing um, about a place, once I'm reconstructing it, that's when I want to be an authoritative writer in that I'm trying to bring the reader into my experience. Good. Um, you know, I, I think today with the, during the Visiting Writers Workshop, uh, I, I really enjoyed how you were talking about um, speculation and nonfiction. Um, and how that applies to your own work and how that applies to nonfiction that you enjoy. I mean, I was wondering if you might like to talk about that concept a little bit more right now. About speculation? Yeah, yeah. about the role speculation yeah, plays in your not, in nonfiction for you and in, you know, how you see nonfiction in general. Yeah, I mean, speculation is an important way in which nonfiction writers imagine, you know, that a, a imagination, imaginative writing isn't only the domain of fiction writers that, um, and as you know, nonfiction writers speculate all the time and have to in reconstructing something. One of the essays I wrote in the book, 
I went to this exclave of Russia um, called um, Kaliningrad, which is separated from the rest of Russia by Poland and Lithuania and Latvia, I believe. Um, and it never was a part of Russia until the end of World War II. Um, before that, it was part of uh, Prussia or Germany, part of Germany. And it was the birthplace of Immanuel Kant, the great philosopher Immanuel Kant. So when I went there, I went there on Russian Federation Day. And uh, luckily I was with a good friend who uh, speaks Russian fluently. And it was fascinating because I kept thinking about Kant and his life and how the city that he loved, that he never left in, during his entire lifetime, except for a couple of very short trips to Berlin, uh, that it had that he hadn't changed, but everything about the city had changed. Now it was this sort of post-Soviet Union city where only, you know, during World War II, the city was flattened. And the, about the only thing that survived was Kant's grave, oddly enough, you know, and even the church next door was demolished. So, um, so I was speculating about that, what Kant would have thought of this change to this place that he loved. It wasn't a kind of nostalgia or that it, it was more of, again, of trying to think about how places change and how we think we're from a place, but a place is very mutable. It's not, um, it's not something that can st always stay the same, that borders change, countries change all the time. And so that is a way in which I speculate, uh, in which I try to speculate is this notion of um, even if we have this sort of imaginative attachment to land and place and um, nationhood, uh, that is in itself a kind of speculation that the, this, this idea that we belong to a nation is itself a kind of imaginative speculation that won't always be the case.